To do this project, we're going to need some files from the 3JS GitHub website. We need these two water normal images. We're also going to need three JavaScript files. Water2.js, not water.js, water2.js, refractor.js, and reflector.js. The water normal images are in my textures folder. It's simpler to do it this way because the files we'll be using are looking for the textures folder. And I put reflector.js, refractor.js, and water2.js in my modules folder. And in my script tag here, I am importing water from where the path is for my water2.js. So we should click water2.js to open it, and we'll have to change our paths in here. So here, where it's importing these things from 3, we need to change it to where 3.module.js is located in our code editor directory. And it wants to import things from reflector.js and refractor.js, so we have to put the paths for reflector.js and refractor.js where they are located in our code editor directory. And if we scroll down the water2.js file, it's looking for these water normal images. So make sure that these paths are where the water normal images are located in your code editor. So mine's in my textures folder, and this is the name of the image. If you click on refractor.js, you need to change the path here to where 3.module.js is located in your code editor directory. And click on reflector.js, we have to change this path to where 3.module.js is located in your code editor directory. So let's examine how water2.js moves water in our scene. Here the water is moving in nine different directions. It's moving up, right, down, left, and on the four corners it's diagonally out, and in the middle it's not moving at all. So the colors are telling the water which way to move. So this is called a flow map. A flow map stores directional information in a texture. So it's a 2D map. The red value is left to right, so it starts at zero and goes to 100%. And the green value moves from top to bottom and starts at zero at the top and goes to 100% on the bottom. So whatever the combination of the red value and green value is determines which direction the water will move. So if there's a 0% red and 0% green, it's going to move to the top left toward the negative x axis and the negative z axis. If it's 50% red and 50% green, the blue value can be whatever. So there can be more than one shade in each particular direction. What we're looking at is the red value and green value. So by passing a flow map to our water texture, we can tell the water which direction to flow. We can make our own flow map using a graphics program. When you create your riverbed and you know which way you want your water to flow, you just have to color those areas to make the water flow in that direction. So for blue, I'm going down. And then for white, I'm going to the bottom right-hand corner. And then for blue, I'm going down again. And then for green, I'm going left. And the darker the green, the higher up on the left side I'm going to go. And then I'm going to go down again, so I'm changing it to blue. I'll show you how I created my height map and flow map for this project. I use GIMP to make my height map and flow map. For my height map, the riverbed is black, that's the lower areas, and the higher areas are white, and the grays are in between. And to make sure my height map matched my flow map, I just created a transparent layer on top, just play new layer and put transparency, so areas I don't draw on will be transparent and I put the colors on the riverbed for whatever direction I wanted the water to flow. And it's a good idea to make your flow map a bit wider than the riverbed so you don't get any weird stuff showing up in your river. And once you're done, you can just save it as an image and put it in your code editor directory. And in my code editor, my flow map and my height map are in my river folder, and that's inside my BG or background folder. So let's start coding our project. Inside my background folder, I have a cliff folder, which holds all the texture files for the cliff, and a river folder, which holds the flow map and the height map. And my ground.js file is also inside my background folder. So the ground.js file is where we will write the JavaScript for the ground. I'm just importing 3module.js into ground.js, so I can use the 3GS commands here. I'm creating a texture loader. I'm setting a variable S21. This is the number of times the texture will repeat horizontally and vertically on the ground. 
and then I'm loading all my texture maps. So for each map, I'm just using my texture loader to load it. I'm setting it to an object. So this is my color map. This is my displacement or height map. This is my normal map. This is my roughness map. And this is my ambient occlusion map. I'm setting the wrap S and wrap T properties to repeat wrapping. And then I'm using the repeat set method to repeat the texture a number of times. In this case, it's just one. But I have this common format. I just use it for different projects. And I can just change this number depending on the size of the texture and the size of the ground. For the height map, I am using this height map that I've created here for the riverbed, not the height map for the cliff. Then I'm creating my ground geometry. It's a plain buffer geometry, 20 units wide, 20 units long, with 40 width segments and 40 height segments. And to use the ambient occlusion map, you need to create a second set of UV coordinates. So I'm just creating a variable for that and making them equal to the first set of UV coordinates. To create the ground material, I'm using a mesh standard material. The map is my color map. The displacement map is my height map that I made up here. My displacement scale is two. That gave me a nice riverbed and some bumps above the water for the ground. My normal map is my norm map. My roughness map is my rough map. I set the roughness to one. One means it's the highest roughness. Zero means it's smooth. And my ambient occlusion map is my AO map. Now I have the word export in front of my constant ground. That means we'll export it into our HTML file. So I'm just passing in the geometry and the material. I'm rotating it minus 90 degrees because the Y axis is up and down in our scene and I'm setting its position. Since ground can be exported into a module, let's go to our HTML file. So at the top here, I have import the object ground from the ground.js file in my background folder. Now I can use ground in my index.html file. So let's make our scene. So I'm just creating a new 3GS scene. I'm creating my skybox by setting the path for the skybox to my skybox folder. And then I'm loading the six images for the positive and negative sides of the three axes. And I'm setting up my camera and setting its position, setting the render and creating my orbit controls. I'm just creating an ambient light and adding the light to the scene. And I'm adding the ground that we imported from ground.js to the scene. Now let's work on our moving water. I've created a texture loader so we can load our image textures in this index.html file. So now we have to load our flow map texture. I'm using the texture loader to load this flow map image that I made in GIMP and I'm putting it in the object flow map. My water geometry will be a plane geometry, 20 units wide by 20 units long. It's the same size as the ground geometry. And to make our water, I'm storing it in the object water. I'm making a new water. I'm passing in the water geometry that I created above. And then I'm setting some properties in this object. So I'm setting the scale to one. You can think of scale as like the size of the waves. The higher the number, the smaller the waves. I'm setting the texture width and texture height. These are the default values. You can set the flow speed here. 0.03 is the default. You can set the reflectivity of the water. So a lower number means the water is more transparent, so you can see the bottom. A higher number means it's more reflective. It has a reflective surface, so you'll see the sky reflecting off of it, or any objects, or whatever. And I'm setting the flow map to the flow map object that we loaded up here. Now I'm setting the Y position of the water to fit the water level with the riverbed. And I'm rotating it minus 90 degrees on the X axis to make the Y axis up and down. And I'm just adding it to the scene. And it's that easy to use water. So the biggest thing in using this water is planning your flow map. I'm just calling the animate function, running the animate function, and I have a window size event handler here. 